I think the stream might be live, but who knows? I have to wait until you guys start saying so. And yeah, I started early. <laughs> but I figured better to start early and maybe have a few minutes to chat with those of you who have already popped into the chat. Hi, guys. Also, Sea Monster, I saw how you were currently working your way through zoo crafting, and it totally made me so happy. I am very much into zoo crafting again. Oh, my goodness. Hi. Hey everybody! Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> I wish I could, Tokidoki! If my birds decide to come on down and you can see my birdcage back here, if they decide to land back here and show themselves off, they will, but they're not the kind of birds that you can hold. Also, there might be a little bit more lag than usual between our chat and then uh, me talking, just to warn you guys, because I think there's some stuff like going on behind the scenes with the YouTube servers, trying to, to spice up that live streamness. So apologies if it seems like there's a ton of lag in beneath. Oh, Caltron! Caltron! Hi! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Caltron, our animal maker magic person, Modder, is in the house. That is so exciting. Um, but yes, Caltron, I have seen your small pets thing. It's just, it was my birthday yesterday, so this weekend has been super busy. And then Pixar had the audacity to come out today too. And then I have all sorts of other things that are going on. But I have making a cute little mod review based off of your small pets mod on my list. So rest assured, I definitely am going to throw my hat into that ring because you've done amazing work. So yes, oh my gosh. <laughs> Hi Anya, oh my goodness. I'm so excited to see all of you. <laughs> oh, and just really quickly, okay. This is the part where I have to, I have to, or all professionally. All right, everyone, welcome to our live stream. Please make sure you check out the video description down below for a few of the rules that we have for this community. The number one rule is to be nice to each other, basically. Like, don't eat each other's faces, be nice. There's no reason to be hostile or judgmental or anything like that. Rule number two, absolutely no questions about where are certain series. Siri is playing what she feels like right now so that I can continue to coast my way out of burnout and into the glory of creating tons of creative adventures for everyone. So no where is X series questions. We will occasionally have streams where I will answer those questions if there are answers to be given. And rule number three is uh, no notice me or like those kinds of comments. Just have fun. Be nice to each other. I promise I notice nice people. I have like some sort of little radar that goes off. That person's being nice to another person. Like earlier, I saw somebody commenting about how they love the community and I Frost Rose was asking uh, Chocolate Chip Cookie, who's one of our mods, how she was doing. And I was like, oh my gosh, everybody's amazing. And was that a hawk that just went in my ravine? It was a squirrel. <laughs> Sorry. If that was the Red Hell Hawk couple that is currently nesting in my backyard, I was going to completely freak out. Oh, Callium, good. So Callium is here too. <clears throat> but yeah, sorry about the, the rambling. I'm really excited to see you guys. And I'm very excited because Callium, who is a longtime community member and one of our patrons, is currently in our private Patreon chat. And she's here because a box that is a gift from her that I'm assuming is like a birthday gift perhaps has finally arrived <laughs> and I found it. They hid it at the back of the post office area and I went to pick it up earlier this week and the new guy was like, oh, uh, here's all these other boxes for you, uh, but I don't see that one. And then got home. Basically, I had to go back today and I had to like have them look through all the boxes. So Callium's box has been recovered. It is from the UK. So I'm very excited to crack this puppy open in just a second. So we're gonna open her box in just a minute. And then we have a bag from Carrie. Carrie with a K from Australia, who you guys may recognize as the fantastic uh, plushie creator. Okay, which one of these plushies can I pull off my desk without knocking 18 million earrings, seashells, twigs, leaves, acorns, and who knows what else down? Give me a second. I'm gonna try to pull one of Carrie's, I mean, you can see some of Carrie's plushies back here, but let me see if I can pull one down. Blue, blue, no, blue. Don't take the plant with you. <laughs> Come here, blue. Okay, this is one of Carrie's latest plushies she sent. This is blue 
from our niche series. Since Carrie very much enjoys Ultimate Fox Simulator, Wolf Quest, our niche series especially. So she's made like these gorgeous, gorgeous nichelings for us. And ironically, Callium is also the one who made, hang on one second, Blue, you stay right over here, who made this awesome Japanese bobtail Nihonium plushie. So we have like the two amazing plushie makers in the house and their packages tonight, which is amazing. And then we've got, hang on, I've got to get her because I absolutely adore her. And then we've got Doli. So I'm, I'm always rambling about like these people because they're amazing. <laughs> and every time I have to show you guys, like this is what Callium made for me a long time ago when we had the Sears of the Sea Doli tribe. So, and yes, as you can tell, all of these things live on my desk and around tons of plants. I, my philodendron is growing again, so it's kind of like wrapped around a ton of my stuff on the desk. So every time I try to pick something up, then it takes like half a plant with it. <laughs> that sounds like a very me problem to have, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, but yes, and I love it. Oh, thank you, Dorkney. Thank you so much. I love my office too. Uh, I'm really proud. I put a ton of work into making this place as green as possible, even though it's actually very dark all day. So I don't get enough sunlight to turn it into the literal greenhouse I wish it could be. But it is full of love and it is full of creativity and it is so full of all of the amazing things that hundreds of you have sent over the years. So I absolutely adore it. <clears throat> So, apologies, didn't mean to ignore, like, your, your chitter-chatters. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Sea Monster, it is a very me problem to have to try to reach for something on my desk and, like, half a plant comes with it and I have to untangle the leaves. It is a true problem I have. Like, look, I can, I can reach to my right and, like, almost like a stage drama, just pull a plant from thin air. This one is hanging off my window. <laughs> I'm surrounded by greenery and I love it. <laughs> but yes, and then also remember guys, no where is or when is X series going to be uploaded questions. We're going to focus on the here and now and look forward to the mystery of tomorrow. Who knows? I certainly don't at this point. We're just going to roll with it and have fun. But all right. Uh, yeah, and Callium, thank you so much. Yeah, my office is actually very, very dark, believe it or not. Uh, I have very special little lights. In fact... Hang on one second. I'm going to see if I can do something funny. See, my office was so dark that Chips was worried that it was making me depressed. And to be honest, it probably was because I am in a corner. My beautiful plant covered uh, desk hutch actually blocks one of the windows because I, I gave the plants the space. But as a result, I don't get the sun. The plants get it. Uh, and then they block it from me. And this room is actually very dark. We have special lamps over to the right. We have a special light bulb in over my head. And we've got multiple bulbs all over this side of the room for the birds and myself so that it'll be a better light. But Chips actually got me these super special lights. What? Come on. I want it to be like... Ah. All right, never mind. It's a cool light that you can actually change on your phone. And I thought I had the multicolor light one, but I guess he didn't think I wanted mood lighting for streams. So I do have a, a light bulb above my head that I can change on my phone if I need to make it like brighter. And he got his dad the same light bulbs because they're really, really good at mimicking natural sunlight all day. Whoa, what's going on over here? <laughs> <laughs> Something about a turtle, hang on. But anyway, the light bulbs that Chips' dad has change different colors. So maybe I'll replace the one above my head with one of those ones. And then when we're like playing, I don't know, Subnautica, I can change the light to blue. But let me see what's going on with this turtle really quickly. And then Callium, I apologize. I've gotten completely sidetracked and excited to see everybody. But we're going to open your package because I know you've got, you've got work to do. All right, what was this? What was this? Something about a turtle. Oh, Vlogger Chicken Man! <laughs> yes, I remember you, my friend. I like to still imagine that you are a whole bunch of um, chickens in a trench coat. And I do know what an alligator snapping turtle is. I have actually seen a few of them in person. Fun fact, when Chips and I came, and this is the last fun fact and little random story before I promise I'm going to start opening things. 
<laughs> but when Chips and I came up here to Michigan and we were touring the area and the apartments, trying to figure out if we were going to live here or not. Okay, we, we drove to this apartment first and we got out of the car and all of these chipmunks just started running around our feet, literally. Chipmunks were frolicking at our feet and we're staring at each other like, did you see that chipmunk? That was so cool. And then we look up <laughs> and there's like black squirrels and gray squirrels and red squirrels and all of these different colors of squirrels. And then a bunny is sitting next to us in the yard eating a dandelion at the time. And we were just stunned. We we're like, wow, this place is beautiful. So that's one of the reasons we decided we loved this particular apartment. But we toured a second apartment before making a decision because we were being responsible adults. And when we were on our way driving to that second apartment, we saw a snapping turtle crossing the road. <laughs> So I've never seen a snapping turtle, A, for longer than five seconds as it rolls off a log back into the water so I can't look at it, and B, crossing the road and out of the water. So we pulled over and we made sure that he got safely across, and then we kind of followed him from a distance so he hopefully wouldn't feel too stressed out, and he lumbered his way in his dinosaur ancient look across the grass. <laughs> towards this pond and you could see the pointed beak you could see that amazing spike they have down their shell right down to that long thick tail that tapers off literally kind of looks like a very flattened squished angry dinosaur basically and we watched him as he lumbered his way a lot faster than we thought he could over the grass, down an embankment, and slipped into a pond. And we were like, wow, that was amazing. That was so cool. I wonder what he's doing. And then this story has a little bit of a food chain twist at the end because we were like elbowing each other like, that was so cool. This place is amazing. Michigan is awesome. We've seen all sorts of animals today and now a snapping turtle. And we look up and we realize the turtle had moved to the pond because at the other into the pond were a whole bunch of ducks and ducklings <laughs> so we were really hoping the ducklings would exit the pond pretty soon and go to a safer one but that's where we left the snapping turtle so yes i have actually seen a snapping turtle and he assisted us in picking michigan as the place that we decided to live so yes yeah, sorry to ramble about that so long i get really excited about animals <laughs> and they do have really nasty bites bianca bianca also it's so excited so excited to see you oh my goodness and yeah snapping turtles are really cool never ever 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 pick one up touch one don't do that with any wild animal anyway but for those of you who are not familiar with them and i love their tongues because their tongues mimic a worm to attract a fish into their mouths uh but for those of you and it, this was this was a good snapper uh who are not familiar like how i want to i want to get like most impressive snapping snapping turtle picture ever here i'll i'll get this random picture <laughs> Uh, of a snapping turtle if I can and show you guys just really quickly and then I promise I will I will hoof it move it and groove it just I love turtles <laughs> I love teaching you guys about cool animals we learned about the bobbit worm in our last live stream after all but this is a alligator snapping turtle or I think is it just a normal snapping turtle it might just be a normal snapping turtle but when I say he looks like a squished angry dinosaur I mean it and you don't want to stick your hand in front of that guy so don't pick up wild turtles like you shouldn't do that anyway but seriously <laughs> All right, there we go. There we go. There we go. And thank you, Callium. I see that. I see that. But yeah, okay. And uh, uh, remember, guys, no where is questions on series. That is one of our new stream rules. Uh, you'll get timed out and possibly even banned if you get really spammy and aggressive with it. So no where is questions. I'm working on it. Sharing your excitement about certain series and saying, man, I really, really love the way that you played Farmville. I miss the, the Farmville life uh, in a happy way. Like, woo, those pies in Farmville always look delicious to me. That's different. That makes me a little curious to go back. But kind of demanding a series returns just kind of makes me feel overwhelmed. So please don't. <laughs> but all right, a sip of my, a sip of my wonderful giraffe peach tea real quick. Thank you. I thought that was an alligator snapping turtle. Basically, if it looks meaner than you ever thought a turtle could, it's probably the alligator snapping turtle. But there is just a normal snapping turtle too. 
Oh my goodness. All right. So let me go ahead. Oh, you've seen one zombie pig woman? That is so cool. Uh, hang on, hang on. Dun, 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 dun. Also, thank you, Wolf Designs. Oh. I love my PhD. But all right, I've I've rambled on enough. Oh, hey Joe. Good morning. I'm so excited to see you. <laughs> And I'm so excited to see you guys too. And Diamond Fire uh, 200, I actually got this from Nikita Creations on Etsy. She's really sweet. Danny, Danny, you, you, oh, you wonderful, wonderful, wonderful goose, you. Thank you, <laughs> Danny. You're always sneaking in like that. Oh gosh, Danny is one of our really sweet patrons. Thank you so much. And yes, it is the day after my thirtieth birthday. I and it it was really funny. I was very tired when I woke up this morning, and I kind of poked chips because he had to. He woke me up early because he had a really important thing to do today, which is why this won't be a super long stream because I have to go make him a nice dinner because he's really not going to enjoy the committee meeting he's in right now. So I want him to come home to a super nice dinner and then leave him alone <laughs> so that he can uh, like relax. But he woke us both up so early. I was still groggy and I kind of smacked at him and I was like. It's the day after my birthday. I'm 31 now. And he just burst out laughing. I turned 30 yesterday and I was so tired this morning. I was like, oh no, now I'm 31. It's the day after. That means I've aged up. So apparently I was really trying to like rapidly age myself, but it was funny. But yeah, so uh, it is the day after my birthday. Yesterday was my birthday. I, uh, I did spend it with chips. I actually spent just a very super quiet day, literally spring cleaning everything in my house, finding about 115 things I was counting to donate, uh, just to try to bring in new year, new birthday year, new decade of life, uh, spring in general. <laughs> so it was really nice and chill. And this weekend I actually had the honor of having an amazing private birthday bash with our patrons. And I'm really glad that it was private because I it was about three hours of me crying and being completely blown away by how kind and amazing our community is, which is a perfect segue into showing you guys some of the things that people have gotten. Um, so just a second ago, and not to like show off tons of things, I wanna open Callium's thing in a second, but I did wanna ask you guys if you've noticed I have a new necklace on. This is a absolutely gorgeous necklace from Moss in the Woods, and it is a gift from Chips. So this is a gift that I got because people are often curious what your significant other gets you for your birthday. And for me, it is this beautiful necklace and it happens to have lilacs inside. So it has live, or not live, they're, they're not live anymore, <laughs> but it has preserved gorgeous lilacs in this pyramid shape right here it is so beautiful and chips got that for me which is really cool because a long time ago he told me that he never never gets a woman jewelry for a gift because what if she doesn't like it and i think that the fact that he bought me a ton of jewelry this year means that he thinks he knows what i like <laughs> and he was totally correct but it's super pretty and it's from Moss in the Woods, if you guys are familiar with her. And I've been like stalking her Tumblr for years. So maybe that's what clued him in. And then also this piece right here is a gorgeous Moss hairpin that he got for me. And he ordered an entire extra bag of hairpins. So if I wanna ever do anything more than a clippy to put my hair up with, because my hair goes almost to my knees when it's out of the clippy and like hanging down, he was like, you're going to need more than just this. So I bought you extra hair clips. <laughs> so that was really sweet. But I have moss in my hair now. How cool is that? I don't think I could ask for anything better. Oh my goodness. And then he got me these tulips, which were actually still closed just last night. And he was so proud to come home with them. And he explained to me they're from Holland. The lady at the florist shop said, this is how you take care of them. And it's just... Oh, it's the first smell I've had of spring this year. So yeah, it was a wonderful, wonderful birthday. And it was just very low key. And I spent it with him once he got home. And we watched Blue Planet 2 and had a fantastic time learning about uh, really silly fish and crabs. And I loved it. And this weekend, I was given several gifts, uh, one of which I'm just going to show off a couple of them to you. 
because they're lying around. One of which is a giraffe, a giraffe scarf from the patrons, which I absolutely love. I keep it right over here because I just love my giraffe scarf so much. And the other of which I just want to show to you guys before we get going because it's hilarious. <laughs> you may recall my fondness and my love of my precious giraffe mug that I found on Etsy, the home of all things quirky and really unique that you just can't find anywhere else, right? Well, now, thanks to the fantastic patrons of our community, I have a second giraffe mug, and it too is full of peach tea. And now, while we stream, I can have plenty of peach tea in giraffe mugs. This is living the high life, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness oh a noodle cat hi my favorite plant it i love all plants i really love moss though it's resilient and it got me through the winter this sounds random but this winter was very long it was cold it was dreary michigan has frolicking chipmunks but only part of the time of the year and the rest of the year um is cold and snowy and lacking any sign of green other than that kind of faded out greenery that's on all the pine trees and evergreens that just kind of blends into the gray of the skies around you uh so yeah with the moss it was the only thing I could find all winter that was like vibrantly green. And it really, whenever it would peek out from on the side of trees or from under snow, gave me hope. And now there's actually blooming flowers beginning to show up outside of the early like spring plants. So we'll make it guys. We're going to make it after all. <laughs> also, Lily Kitty, hi. Yeah, embrace the moss. Come on. I've got it in my hair even. This is fantastic. You know who else wears moss in their hair, my friends? In fact, I actually want to know if you happen to know what animal, uh, there's many animals that have different algaes and whatnot that they wear in their hair, but what animal is pretty well known for having moss and algae in its fur? And we're talking a terrestrial animal because you could pretty much point at almost all of the turtles of the world and it's covered in like a bed of, of mossy whatnots. <laughs> But let me know if you guys happen to know, while I have a quick sip of, of my drink and have Callium's package in my lap, if you guys happen to know what animal is covered in moss and algae, and it, we're talking terrestrial, meaning land-based. In fact, they're often in trees. Ah, there we go! Lipsanji, you've got it! <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, so Lipsanji, sloths! I see sloths popping up everywhere around here. I am so proud of you guys! You know your sloths! Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> and then also, I have to give credit to Marie Young for asking Moss Leaf, because yes, in our Sims 3 Warrior Cats, I do have a little bit of a silly thing where I like to say that Moss Leaf the cat happens to have uh, moss like in her fur so that's what the green patches are <laughs> so that was like a plus 10 points for the inside reference to our series there <laughs> all right all right i'm so proud of you guys for knowing that sloths have moss <laughs> crazy pig oh hey luca luca uh, luca i am forever gonna love that all of your answers will always be pigs that is a plus, perfect. Then I know it's you, my friend. But all right, clearly I am like super happy. I get really rambly when I'm super happy. I'm 30 and it's fantastic. Don't ever let anyone tell you that's over the hill or boring or old. It's the age where finally you can do what you want because you, if you made it that far, you must have something put together. <laughs> and you can just be happy being yourself. Nobody can tell you what to do anymore. Ha, huh, take that mom. <laughs> all right but let me open this up callium all right good sloths are nature's grass type callium that's adorable oh and now there's cute little sloth pictures in our patreon discord i love it and sloth facts going on up in the chat i am so proud of you guys and thank you frost rose i love my giraffe mugs and also let's see Lemon Mustache 05. Thank you very much. I wore my Sims earrings today because theoretically we're going to be playing Sims 4 in just a minute here. All right, so I'm going to open up my couple packages and then I will continue to ramble sillily at you whilst we play The Sims. But one package is from 
England, I believe. And this is from Callium, who I showed you some of her things that she made earlier. And I'm gonna go ahead and wiggle this around. What, Joe, that is so cool. So your sisters, your sisters know how cool it is to get older. Oh my gosh, it's A, a plus, A plus. Oh, 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 oh. You guys, you guys, it's a box in the box. Let me pull this out. I'm, oh, I'm shaking again. If you ever become a patron, guys, you'll, you can go back and see our private streams. And basically, I spent this whole weekend shaking like a leaf and crying in gratitude and emotion. And here I am. I'm already starting to shake again because this is an amazing, beautiful creation from an amazing person in our community. <sighs> okay, breathe. Breathe. I'm so glad I have two mugs now. I need liquid if I'm going to start crying. Uh, all right. So, Leopard Corgi Creations. Thank you for adopting a doll from me. Make sure your doll is properly cared for. Okay, good. Yes. Yes. Good. I promise not to feed it to a theoretical dog that I have, Callium. <laughs> Happy birthday! Oh, thank you so much! And yes, from leopardcorgi.co.uk, where we have many adorable things like the really cute little chemistry cats that I adopted from her before. And then, oh my gosh, Ancient LJ, it's so good to see you. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it sounds like everybody is really quite in the <laughs> quite in the same age range there. My little brother just had his birthday like two days before me. Well, I have two little brothers. I'm the eldest. And he turned, I think, 21. And I remember thinking, he's so young because <laughs> I'm over here. No, I guess he's 23. If I'm 30, then he's 23. And that feels like absolute donkey years back then. Eventually, you hit an age where you sort of sit around and you're like, was I still in high school? Like, that's, I was just a little kid at that time. But not to, like, say anything about, like, 23-year-olds being little kids. Just, it's so fun when you can proudly look behind you and be like, yeah, I've grown every year. I've become a little bit more every year. Yeah, go me. All right, let's not stab myself with scissors. Give me just a second. All right, hang on, hang on. I need to I need to put all of my attention into opening the secondary box right over here without stabbing myself in the leg with my scissors. So give me just a moment. <laughs> also, you're fine, Callium. All right, let me glance at chat carefully. Oh, you guys, oh, there's so many of you who are 10. That means you guys are totally my, close to my niece's age. And I adore her with all of my heart. Fun fact, sometimes if you see uh, like Slime Rancher just pop up out of the blue, no reason, no rhyme to its schedule. It's cause she called me and she was like, auntie, I really love, I really love a honey mint. How's honey mint doing? And I'm immediately like, oh, honey, let me go see. I'll let you know how Honeyman is. And then I'll like text my sister the link to the video like an hour later. <laughs> Suddenly Honeyman. <laughs> so anytime my nieceling uh, wants Slime Rancher, that's sometimes why Slime Rancher has a ridiculous schedule and it just appears out of nowhere for no reason. <laughs> All it takes, all it takes is bribery from my niece. <laughs> Look at you guys. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, yes. everybody's like 12 and 14 and 10. Oh, guys. Oh, you are right in the age range that I taught when I was a lost little 23-year-old myself teaching uh, elementary and middle school kids science. And so we have a good, we've got a good vibe. We've got a good vibe. I know what it takes to get your guys' attention when you're in school. I have to talk about birds who make nests out of spit and let you hold bat skeletons. <laughs> That's the best. All right. Hang on. Hang on. Sorry, Callum. I'm trying to chat and... Okay, there we go. Okay, we made it. We made it. Okay. All right. Yes, and we're on camera. All right, Callum. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to gently crack open the package now. And we're going to see together... Dun, 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 dun. What's inside? Who knows? Give me a moment. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Very carefully wrapped and packaged. The mystery wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in a mystery of enigma of packing, packing bubbles. Man, this makes me really happy because I had to go walk to P.O. Box and I was carrying the packages so worried I was going to break something, Hallium. 
And now, like, there's this relief of, like, oh, phew, even if I had tripped over the, the terrible sidewalks they have here in Ann Arbor, it would have been okay. <laughs> oh, thank you, Toki Doki. Oh, gosh. All right, hang on. We're almost there. Oh, Osha, you are just, in, in our Patreon chat, you are just winning my heart. <gasps> no way! Really? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Gallium! <laughs> oh my gosh! What? Guys, guys, how many of you guys can guess who just showed up right in time for April Fool's Day, which has to be like literally his holiday? Oh my gosh, if you guys could guess who just showed up, this is fantastic. <laughs> Yes, Perry, you are right. You are right. Oh my gosh. I would love to know how many of you know who this happens to be. Oh, LaVissa, you are there too. Oh my goodness. Yes, Osha has got it. Frostros, you have got it. All right, guys, this is Tata. Tata the trickster has showed up here at our home in his original form when he crashed the game when I tried to change his name to Clay and he was like, oh no, 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 I'm Tata. So yes, Tata has shown up. We, we have made him into kind of like a meme on our server, <laughs> like our server on our whole channel. Let me see if I can find the like laughing Tata emoji that we actually have. I think I removed him from temporarily with intents to restore him from the emojis that you can pick if you're like one of the subs on our channel. But let me see, Tata, where are you? I've got him somewhere. Hang on, let me see. <laughs> okay, I'm going to add to things I need to sort and organize my art folder. There's random pictures of lemurs mixed in with pictures of mice and my emojis that are supposed to be for my professional channel. <laughs> There's a slime rancher slime. Oh my goodness, I make a mess in here. I cannot believe this. All right, well, I cannot find Carrie's, uh, a different Carrie, Carrie with a C. Really amazing thing that she made for us when it comes to Tata and his emoji. Is in here? Is in here? I found my Krabbits. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys know, you guys know who he is. You guys know who he is. Yeah, this is Tata. This is him. He's fantastic. He is our trickster god and he is perfect. So these are all of the features that he had when we very first ran into him. And he has reappeared in so many other people's nicheling worlds. And he has reappeared in my world so many times. But Kalyam, thank you so much. I actually think it's hilarious. Okay, so this is, this is the funny story. Yeah, we have the Tata emoji in our patreon chat at least let me see if i have it do i have it here in my personal dang it i don't have it in my personal i just have the hooligans uh, and a whole bunch of other things in our chat in the the actual like youtube thing <laughs> yeah i do just have random pictures of different animals shoved in with all of my professional stuff i gotta organize that but yeah anyway uh Callium, funny story the thing is, this is Tata the Trickster God from our Nishling series, right? And I was telling you guys earlier in the stream that when I went to pick up all the packages that we were supposed to open for the private Patreon birthday party that we had over the weekend, which was mostly private because I spent the whole time crying, uh, enjoy. <laughs> when I went to pick up the packages, his package was the only one that was mismarked by the new guy working at the P.O. Box place. So Tata, the trickster god's package, out of all of the packages I picked up last week, was the only one that was already delivered and it had been marked incorrectly. So it was hiding behind a whole bunch of other boxes and marked for the wrong person. So talk about hilarious. Of course, the trickster god would be the one package that didn't show up properly and I had to go and make them search for. That's just really ironic and funny to me, and I'm never going to forget that. I, that it erases all of the annoyance and worry I felt about it. All right, you. All right, you. You come out here and hang down with Blue for just a second. That is just so cool. And of course he would be the one that I had trouble with. <laughs> he is so soft. You guys are right. Oh, hey, thank you so much, Teacup Summer. I'm so excited to see you. Oh, my goodness. And I saw you in Patreon chat just a minute ago. <laughs> thank you. 
<laughs> All right, let me have a little sip of my tea from my brand new giraffe mug. That is hilarious. That is so much fun. Ah, uh, he did already come and he already started causing trouble. I cannot believe that. <laughs> so yeah, that's just really funny. And oh, look at that. Yeah, Leopard Corgi is sharing some really great pictures of him uh, right now. That is just so much fun. Yes. Okay. And that's a Patreon chat too. But all right. And then remember guys, don't, don't ask, uh, yeah, don't ask about where different series are. That's one of our new rules. Eventually we'll have conversations. I'll make an entire stream dedicated to talking about where I think series will be. For now, they're kind of just popping up as I'm able to do them as I continue to coast my way out of burnout, like I mentioned earlier. But all right, I want to get to playing with the hooligans and get to playing with our Sims 4 stuff. So my friends, the last package. It is a big one. It is a huge one. <laughs> it is pretty darn large and it is from Australia. And this is from Carrie, who I showed you guys blue earlier. Oh, and hey, Kaylin. And yes, I have. I have indeed seen those. Trust me. I'm keeping an eye on the Wolf Quest beat. Trust me. <laughs> if I can, I will be on top of that like a wolf on an elk if I can hurry and see that happen. But for now, let's celebrate that Carrie has tossed another thing up from Australia our way. And I want to reach in here and figure out what's in here because it feels really, really big. It feels really big. So let's see. Let's see what's in here. This is really big. As soon as I reached in. You know, and it just occurred to me, I should probably, like, to tease you Australians, have a little bit more nervousness at reaching into a package from Australia. You guys have so many spiders there. Oh my gosh. This is the only thing inside the package. This is, yep, this is the only thing in here. This is really big. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. I'm going to I'm going to undo the the tissue paper. And I'm going to try to pull it up so that I don't see what's inside until you guys see it too. But let's see. I have no idea what this is, but Carrie has sent a wolf, a fox. She has sent at least a half dozen geeshlings. This is big. This is like easily five times anything she's ever tossed our way. So, there we go. Tissue paper, tissue paper. There goes the red tail hawk flying out my window. All right, and what do we have here? This, oh my. <laughs> what? Oh, it's one of her Afghan hounds. She also, if I remember correctly, professionally breeds Afghan hounds. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at this one. Oh my goodness, he's so big. Carrie, what do we have? Oh, there's your letter. Look at that. Now I have an entire book about Afghan hounds to flip through too. But she does actually, if I, I, I think if I remember correctly, professionally breed and uh, raise, or I don't think she breeds them, but she raises and loves Afghan hounds. So look at this beauty. Now I want to add an Afghan hound into our Sims 4 stream and a lovely dog necklace. Look at that. Oh, this is for the year of the dog. Carrie, that's what you were talking about. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oh, for year of the dog. And she has some beautiful pictures of Afghans in here. How many of you guys have seen that like Instagram star Afghan picture that has been going around? I need to find that because I, I actually think that Afghan hounds are really cool. If somebody in Patreon chat knows the like Insta the with the blonde Afghan that has her hair up with that gorgeous collar, if anybody knows that, if you could like put the picture in Patreon chat so that I can like show it off, I really want to because it was so cool. Uh, all right, let's see. Time for part two, celebrating the year of the dog. Uh, many years ago, I met the most lovely breed of dog I had ever seen, the Afghan hound, and was determined to learn more about this ancient breed. I met my first Afghan at a dog show and tried to learn more. Sadly, the people I asked were not very friendly or willing to help answer my questions, but I kept going and, and in 1995 bought my very first Afghan, an eight-month-old black and tan male named Cody. Cody taught me 
you much about this lovely, stubborn, independent, clownish, goofy, aloof breed of hound, and they have been my passion since then, even, when, when, even though two whippets have come to join the mix. Afghans will always be my first, uh, my first love. So along with the Afghan hound plushie, you have your very own book about Afghans to help you with the goal of reading dog books, which is a goal I have, Carrie. Oh, I haven't mentioned that on the vlog channel yet, but I want to read one nonfiction book and one fiction book related to dogs a month for the whole year of the dog. And I'm already way behind that by like two months, but it's going to happen and I will mention it on the vlog channel. So thank you. This will be a really fun book to read and tell you guys all these Afghan facts with. And I'm definitely going to have to make some Afghans show up in our mini series in which I could have an Afghan. Uh, let's see. With your goal of reading dog books, it is some history, care of the breed, the standard, and then goes on to explain about housing, feeding, caring, etc. It's an old book, but what gives it sentimental value is it is it is that it is the very first Afghan hound book I ever bought. And so now I'm entrusting it to you for your collection. Oh, care. <laughs> I'm going to cry. So enjoy and as always continue doing an awesome job. Oh my gosh. Now that your hound is an Afghan, grooming is a must. Remember that everything is brushed down. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Carrie. I love hearing about people's passions and sharing them with each other, guys. And so here is evidence in its beautiful physical form of somebody who has a passion for a specific breed of dog and has taken it all the way into the realm of sharing it with the world through making plushies. This is one, I, this is like, I believe part of her business is that she makes these custom plushies and it starts with all of the Afghans that she makes and that she just loves this breed. And I think that that's quite fascinating and I'm really excited to learn more about their history and somebody has just shared one second finally okay who was that who was that Dorkney yes Dorkney found it okay hang on Dorkney has found the picture of the Afghan I was just talking to you guys about the little Instagram star Afghan uh which I don't think she is an Instagram star uh let's see let me pull it up I think her name is Ivanka but this was going around Twitter the other day, and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, they're so much more beautiful than I realized. But how many of you guys have seen this picture of this, like, really, ah, where am I going? <laughs> of this beautiful Afghan. And so now I have an Afghan of my own. So that seems so cool. I'm going to have to look into them. They've not been a breed that has been on my radar too much. Because I have never, I've never seen one in person, actually. I'm pretty sure I would remember. They're absolutely gorgeous. All right, let me put my scissors away. Let me clear my desk off a little bit while you guys can appreciate. And if anyone has the source for this picture, like who she is, where is she from, what is she doing, <laughs> then do let me know because I don't want to just like not credit it. Oh, Robin, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for the sub, my friend. Oh, my goodness. But yeah, thank you for letting me ramble on for a good half hour about animals and how beautiful they are and how fantastic they are. And thank you guys so much for... <laughs> For the Afghans, thank you so much to Carrie with a K from Australia for your gorgeous Afghan and for entrusting me. That's a big deal to have like the very first book that she ever had about her Afghans. That's a huge deal. Uh, yeah. And so Kara, you saw that on Twitter too. It's beautiful. So thank you so much. And I really look forward to learning about more of the amazing breeds of animals around the world from you guys, because that kind of passion that we kind of all come together into the Pixel Biology community to share, you don't have to be like, really expert in all sorts of things just the things you love like osha in our uh, patreon community is great with snails and that has just made me so excited and fascinated to learn more about snails and then we've got some some people who are like really into uh samoyeds i believe is how you pronounce it and then there's me with goldie and finches and i'm not even like super expert on them i just love them <laughs> or moss i guess <laughs> so i love Seeing people who are passionate come together and just sharing their passion and people celebrating it. So keep it up, guys. That's amazing. <laughs> All right. Give me just a second. Uh, I saw, I'm so sorry I haven't been looking at chat for a little while. 
<laughs> I got really into my Afghan, to say the least. <laughs> but let me sort through some things. And you guys, we've actually got some Sims to play. It's actually happening. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> Only half an hour to open two packages. You're beginning to realize why the Patreon unboxing was kind of a, uh, kind of a little bit, a little bit, you know, um, uh, long-winded and elsewhere. All right. Oh, and apparently her name is Sophia. Thank you so much, Deviana. So Dorothy underscore Sophia on Instagram is where you can find that beautiful dog. And her name is Sophia. And she is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, all right. Let me have a few sips of tea. Oh, have fun swimming! Have fun swimming, puppy wizard. And don't worry, the stream will be up later. This is really just meant to be like a super chill stream and laid back. Oh my goodness. Man, uh, Henry, can I tell you facts about hamsters? Well, there's some hamsters in The Sims 4 now. I haven't looked at them yet, but I know they're there. And uh, also... Let's see, some facts? There's so many species of hamster, actually, which I didn't really know until I worked in a pet store. And uh, definitely hamsters can be potty trained. Did you guys know that? Because I have to admit, that was a hamster fact that really blew my mind when I found out. There we go. Whew. I'm almost out of peach tea in that giraffe. Thankfully, I happen to have another. <laughs> oh, Uttermost Moth, hey! <laughs> it's so exciting to see you. Oh my goodness. Uh, and then, would I have a dog breed when we have a permanent home? Uh, like, or would I get a dog if when we have a permanent home? Which may be well over a decade. You guys are going to be traveling around the whole world with me as Chips and I like figure out where we're going to live. Um, and wait for him to finish his studying and everything. But uh, we've thought about it, actually. Like, his family had Standard Poodle growing up named um, Rosie, and she was amazing. Like, one of those dogs who was so well-behaved, she almost didn't feel like a dog in the house. She was super intelligent, super kind. The only thing that she didn't like was smaller white dogs that she would bark at a lot, but otherwise never barked. Uh, really cool. Uh, and then my family had Great Danes growing up, and so I'm very partial to the Great Dane breed. There's something uh, also very intelligent, very nice, very kind about them. Um, and the, their only flaw is that they only live five to seven years, which sucks. <laughs> so we've talked about if we would get a dog, we would probably get a cat first because we travel so much. And a cat with like a sibling could probably be okay with that and have like a, a person to come and live in our home while we're gone and take care of them. But a dog might be a lot more emotionally upset because Chips is going to have to travel around the world all year round for his work. And I'm probably going to go with him and take you guys with me and yay, vlog channel, woo, Japan next year. Woohoo! Iceland next year too. Yeah, you guys want to check out the vlog channel if you want in on all of this nonsense. So we think cats would deal with that better, but we do talk every now and then because there's something about like if you're having a hard day, you guys who have dogs know if you're having a hard day and you just need that warm, gigantic pile of fluff and love. <laughs> then that's a dog and when you just sit down and you're like I'm not feeling good I don't know if I want to be mature enough to make myself feel good and then your dog just shows up and they like smash into you and snuggle you and all of a sudden you have to cuddle this fluffy thing and fine you're feeling better now so we thought about a golden retriever or a breed along that line. Uh, we also would look into rescuing, of course, but we definitely want to try to gear ourselves more towards a personality uh, just to like, you know, summarize what kind of personality in a dog we'd look for. It would probably be like a golden retriever. And there's some fur from the Afghan. I would have to get used to that <laughs> again, having fur on me and in my mouth from having uh, pets with fur again. Your feathers are bad enough as it is, guys. But so we'd probably try to rescue for sure. But we're, we'd be looking into like a dog that would have kind of the personality, uh, low energy, maybe low energy isn't the right word, but that kind of like wholesome feeling that I always get whenever I'm around a golden. 
every single time I've ever met a golden retriever, and probably because they're not exactly itty bitty puppies and they've had some degree of training, they're just so wholesome. That's what I think about when I think about golden. So yeah, it would be it would be a golden. I've had a German Shepherd actually before a Moon Fox, and she was the most high energy, demanding puppy I've ever had in my entire life, and she was exhausting, and I love her, and I don't think that because. Uh, I live a career life where I'm sitting at the computer most of the day, a uh, German Shepherd would be super happy with that. If you get a German, you want to keep them really intellectually engaged all day long. And I don't know, I could kind of see like something, we might get something old. We might adopt a senior dog. <laughs> like, there you go. There you go, Mr. Fredrickson. You just go ahead and nap on the floor now. And so we'd probably look into like a low energy dog if we did get one. Because <laughs> otherwise, I don't think it would be very happy that I spend so much of my day sitting and chatting with all of you amazing people. Alternatively, we'll go walk dogs at the local like shelter and, and get our fill of all sorts of breeds that way. Uh, so yeah, the Goldies can be a very, very high energy lily. 100% agree with it. Um, but if you train them well, they're kind of like poodles too. At least the ones I've I've met where they mesh with you very, very well. So that's why. Oh, hey, and Lena. Oh, Lena, thank you so much. And Lena, that is so cute that your dog brings you socks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have a cat named Zigadora, aka Ziggy, and she was an all black cat with kind of a weird zigzag tail. And she loved to uh, make sure that I, I would rest if I was upset. So whenever I was like really upset as a dramatic teenager and like crying and everything, Zigadora would show up and she would call at me and meow at me and claw at my leg until I would go down into my room, lay down on the bed and rest. And and only after I laid down from like freaking myself out or being an overly dramatic teen would she lay on top of me, lick me a few times and take a nap. And after we had, it could only be like 5, 15, half an hour. It didn't matter. It had to be a short nap at least. Then she would get up and I could get up. But if I tried to get up before Zigadora thought I had calmed down in my bed enough to like resume being a normal teenager and less of the drama, she would meow and claw and run around my legs until I would lie down. So Zigadora was like the best cat. So I am a little bit partial to cats because I seem to stumble upon really good ones. But anyway. <laughs> hey Cindy how are you doing and Lacey yes 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 I hope you're doing well too <laughs> yeah Ziggy was the best cat I really loved her uh, but let me introduce you guys really quickly to where we are because I probably only have like about half hour 40 minutes more I need to make dinner for chips before he comes home from the awful committee with like capital A uh, awful. And uh, yeah, we are here. We're back in Sims 4 and we are hanging out with Heather Trunchbull. And when I thought about who I wanted to hang out with on my post-birthday day, I thought, you know, we haven't seen our troublemaker Heather in quite a while, so it would be quite fun to go ahead and, and check in on her. And Noodle Cat, thank you so much. <laughs> Oh my gosh, your dog finds your socks with the holes in them. That's adorable. Uh, and actually, that's a good segue. Because Heather, for those of you guys who are not familiar with Miss Trunchbull here, is our thief in training. And I've never played a thief before. I've never played with a sim where I'm actively trying to get that mischief skill up and through the roof. I've never played with a pickpocketer who is actually good at it uh, before. And that's what Heather does. So Heather happens to have an entire backyard full of hooligans, AKA raccoons. And I probably had her on the mind because I had a raccoon eating out of my bird feeder again last night. And those of you guys who remember our streams from a while ago when we were here in the Sims 3 world oh so often, will remember the rascal raccoons. So Heather is the crime, the crime lady, the crime mother, if you will in charge of these rascal raccoons. And they go out and steal things from around the neighborhood for her. And one time, Pockets, our best rascal raccoon, even stole a car, which was amazing. So Heather is, is running this team of raccoon rascals. They steal stuff for her whenever they go out prowling. And she's also trying to become a better thief in her own right, get that kleptomania skill up. And her favorite thing to steal is toys because she, she grew up orphaned 
living on the, the hard life and she never had toys as a kid and now it just fills that hole in her heart to be able to snag and swipe those those cheap little plushy cute dolls and put them in her home. One day I hope for Heather to adopt a needy daughter of her own and shower her in all the toys of the world. But for now, we happen to have Heather. Whoops, that's the Rage Goose. Don't worry, Rage Goose doesn't have to come out just yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we happen to have Heather at the Mischief and the Hijinx Festival. So we're here. We're here at the Mischief and Hijinx Festival uh, because we are going to try to enjoy it. It's the perfect festival for her. It's all about mischief. It's all about hijinx. We can get her mischief skill up. We can steal stuff. We can prank people in public and they can't get mad because it is the Hijinx Festival. Also, I love you guys so much for sharing your dog stories. I apologize if I'm not glancing at chat just yet i want to try to get a little bit of gameplay done so that i can i can say i streamed <laughs> but please continue to share with one another all of your super awesome stories about your animals with one another even if i can't directly reply that's part of what building up a fantastic community is about you guys relying and leaning on each other for that sort of amazingness come on we're like the best community for being able to brag about your pet is it not the most exciting thing to be able to just to like slide in somewhere and be like, so let me tell you about my dog and the time that he found his way into the neighbor's backyard. It's really dramatic. And he also stole a sandwich. And people here are so excited to hear that story. I love it. All right. So, oh, Renee, hey. <laughs> yeah, I need to get some cows somewhere. Oh, look at this. It's my other draft mug. Oh. I love seeing your guys' dog stories. But yeah, I apologize if I, I'm like not looking at chat too terribly much because I want to give Heather her time. It's been months, Heather. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. So Heather is here and she is actually here with her friend Akia, who I might like, we'll call her Aki for short because Heather loves doing all sorts of silly nicknames. And so Aki is actually a uh, salesperson, a retail store like person who works at this mall. And this mall happens to be the haven of Heather's dreams. Dreams. She loves, she loves swiping and stealing things with her kleptomaniac trait, which means she likes to have sticky fingers and steal stuff. She gets a little rush off of stealing things. Um, but she loves this store because she can come here and she can steal all sorts of things. It's a big multi-mall and it doesn't have a lot of people in it, uh, like running it. So she's able to sneak from place to place and steal things pretty often. And one of her favorite things to steal are actually any of the toys that she can find down down inside of the toy area. Never so many that the kids would feel like they had their toys taken away from them, but just enough so that she could absolutely like take them home and share them with the hooligans and feel like she has a little bit of that lost childhood back. But she met Aki at the mall while swiping toys and then the Hijinx Festival came to town. So we're going to go to the Hijinx Festival with her new friend Aki and hopefully, yeah, we're not super duper close friends with her just yet, but we're going to hopefully become close friends with Aki while we're out and having a good time tonight. So first things first, let's go ahead and greet her. I don't think uh, brag about possessions. <laughs> No, we should compliment her outfit because look at this. This is that cool shirt that we have in Sims Mobile. So I'm always going to think about it as like spring day shirt from Sims Mobile uh, forever and ever now. No, I don't think we want to tell her about the thrill of this still just yet. But let's go ahead and just get to know her. Hopefully this will all work. It's been so long. Girl Panda. Let's see and discuss interest. Mm -hmm. There you go, Heather. All right, there we go. Woo, all right. Whoa, there's pigeons. <laughs> Hi, little guys. Oh, gosh, you're so cute. Oh, I forgot how they... Oh, he just came out of the concrete. That's fine. Oh, gosh, I missed them. Oh, and now Heather has the charisma skill. That's probably going to be super useful for her as a thief. So, and yeah, we're talking to Aki about how we just moved in. We're talking about alpacas. I prefer alpacas over llamas because I had a llama spit in my face once and I've never forgiven it. Um, let's go ahead and gossip with her. And then let's go ahead and maybe tell a funny story for a little bit and just joke around. <laughs> oh my goodness. And remember guys, remember no asking about where certain series are right now. Or else it'll be, it'll be a very quick little uh, timeout. Uh, let's see, there we go. 
I love these pigeons. And then I've actually never Mark completed Anush. the objectives Bravo, for day. attending the hijinks festival. Farm, so this is an outing so with a friend. Jigs. And if we buy the festival t-shirt and wear the swag, <laughs> Inja, Inja. that will apparently help us out with uh, this, this like outing we're having. So let's see. Uh, I wonder, should we do some mischief? Um, oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Aki just pulled a bunch of dirty plates out of her inventory. She's like, I got to take care of this. All right. Well, let's go ahead. And I actually wanted to change Heather out of this outfit into a different one so that we could enjoy the hijinks festival. And I noticed, guys, um, I never set Heather's outfits up when we made her. So this is like her other outfit. <laughs> it's a top hat. And this dress and really, really vibrant makeup. Uh, so, yeah. And wow, those are green shoes. It really looks like she just stole one of each of those items from a different place. <laughs> and then otherwise, she has like this really dramatic nightgown that she gets to wear. And otherwise, let's see, she has, is this like her athletic wear? I guess this is the closest I have got. This I think this is her party outfit. This is the closest thing we have so that Heather Trunchbull can enjoy a good party. So I just I just cracked up when I saw that. She doesn't really have anything. Doesn't really have anything super fancy. But let's send her over and have her buy the t-shirt then to start loading up on swag. Because maybe we'll just change her into the humor buy and wear humor and hygiene festival t-shirt that sounds like a good thing to do plus it'll help us blend in and a good thief who wants to pickpocket different people happens to know that you gotta blend in almost like a city pigeon just looks like a natural part of the scenery uh whenever you might want to pick someone's pocket or maybe really pull some mischief on them all right there we go there we go all right, hang on one second. Oh, I'm so excited to see how many of you guys have really cute dogs. Oh, she picked the green one. Heather, I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you. She picked the green one and she is wearing her adorable little pearls. All right, here we go. <laughs> Might as well just leave her as she is. But it has been a long time since I have come here. So I can't remember what we can do. But where did our friend go? Oh, there she is. All right, let's come over. Aki, let's go ahead, let's brighten her day. Maybe brag about new possessions as a way to brag about the new shirt we just bought. I guess that's all we needed to do for that outing too. And then let's see if we can get her mischief skill up. I just want her to have a nice day out at the mischief. Uh, I just, yeah, I want her to have a nice day out here at the mischief place. That alien is calling out in his alien voice to drop off some of the food. That is so cool. Can you guys hear him at all? Because that's pretty awesome. Nice. And a rainbow pigeon would be really cool, Shade Lake. I actually would love that if you just like had a random color pigeon. Oh, we learned that Aki has a romantic heart. Maybe she likes coming to these events because she's searching for romance. Um, then let's instill with fake confidence, which isn't very nice to do to our friend, but it will raise our mischief skill. And then I, oh, we have to drink from one of these. So we can drink from the jokesters or we can drink from the pranksters. Oh, let's go join the pranksters. Let's go join the pranksters together. Come on, Aki. You gotta pull a good prank. That'll help you find true love, I'm sure. Okay, good. Yeah, you guys can hear his ridiculous, cool, cool Simsy voice. <laughs> also, Dorkney, I 1000% agree. All right, let's see. All right. So I forgot, when you come to these festivals, what you have to do to join one or the other of the teams is you've got to just kind of settle yourself right in, get down there and toss back one of the drinks to signify that you're going to be part of that team. So we're going to be on Team Pranksters. All right, there we go. And now we're feeling super playful. Apparently that also helps to combat the cold. <laughs> and then we need to take care of some of Heather's needs. Oh, look, she's glowing purple now. That's so fun. So let's go ahead and get some food. What are you doing, Aki? This woman. Hey, if you're going to make a mess, then I'm going to let Heather come over and play in it. Like, why not? Oh, Heather, where are you going? Don't go to work. You can't leave and go to work. 
<laughs> if you want to do something, just go ahead and pickpocket people here. Okay, she's like, I really have to use the restroom. All right, Heather, you're putting the damper in my ability to make you just go around and have, like, fun. So go in there and use the restroom, and then we'll feed her. But this is a really quiet festival. I feel like normally there's a lot more people roaming around. <laughs> yeah, maybe if she pulls a good prank, she'll be able to, to find true love. Who knows? Maybe she'll, like, run into the perfect prankster. Maybe we should do some sort of really cool prank. Oh, and Katie Quake, thank you so much. I am so excited to hear that you are enjoying plants. Plants are important. And that may sound really silly, but being able to cherish love and enthusiastically pursue those little things that are everywhere, it's really fun. And Chips has actually told me in the past that one of the things he loves about me is no matter where we go in the world, I'm like super into plants. Yay! Oh, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Pranksters for the win. Let's go order food. Oh, Heather's ordering food on her own. She is such an independent sim. Oh, my gosh. Oh, look at the pigeon. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ezer. I love the pigeon. Uh, in fact, that's that's one of the custom emojis that we actually have. And we have an entire army of pigeons elsewhere in this particular world. Um, oh, gosh. What is going on? Oh, dear. Our boss is calling because we're skipping work. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I think I might have to, like... Okay, can we call in sick? Uh, take a vacation day, call in fake sick to work. That feels like the perfect thing to do if we are pulling a prank. So the first prank we're going to pick is calling in fake sick to work. While we're at the festival with the alien voice calling out, come get your food in the background. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, hang on. There we go. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, Feel better soon. Know, Hopefully fine. they believed us. So first prank was calling in sick to work. All right, now what are we eating? Broschetti. Maybe we'll know how to make this back at our trailer that Heather has after she finishes. Hey, why don't you get some food too, Aki? Come on. What? We're neck and neck. Okay, we need we need to... Oh, imply tea sabotage. Oh, that's so cool. I forgot. Okay, so when you come to the Humor and Hijinks Festival... You have to do these different events. Like, you have to do different mischief things if you want the mischief group to win. So let's go ahead and we're going to eat. And then we're going to really, like, drill all of the, the prankster bits. Come on. Come on, Heather. You need to go ahead. Oh, I don't think she likes the food. Oh, my gosh. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on Heather. And thank you so much, money, money. <laughs> <laughs> also senpai oh my goodness all right so we're gonna let these two talk but i really okay we called in fake sick to work oh we've done a rude introduction to this random guy okay then i guess we can prank him let's go ahead and prank him let's be mischievous uh imply jokester sabotage you better not be with those jokesters right buddy uh convinced he is poisonous there she goes. And we're going to see if we can get the pranksters to win. I'm not sure how much longer we have. Ooh, apparently he, he likes the, the inn hearing that the pranksters might be up to something bad. Uh, let's share a conspiracy theory with them to convince them the pranksters are out to get him. There we go. And Aki actually seems to be impressed with our ability to lie. Maybe she just thinks that it's all part of the fun and games of the night. Dorkney, that's an amazing meme you just shared in the Patreon chat. I love it. Oh, and congratulations, Diamond Fire. I'm so excited to hear that your chicks hatched. And let's see, the pranksters are in the lead by two. Keep performing interactions. What was that? Did we just finish? The pranksters have won. Oh, we just got a voodoo doll and 500 simoleons for that? What? What? Okay. All right. I think it's over. We literally just got here. <laughs> Heather, I feel like this is this is somehow somehow this is to do with you, my dear. Somehow. Look, everybody's like closing up shop. They're like, good, we're done. Aw, Heather didn't get to do anything really dramatic. Poor Heather. At least we managed to like enjoy some of the festival. Oh man. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's been so long since I've seen these fireworks. I've been working so much on the jungle and in the, the cow plant farm. I forgot how fun it could be just to watch the city life in Sims 4. Look at how pretty that is. All right. Well, Heather convinced a man that the tea was poisonous. 
because the pranksters had put something nasty in it. And so apparently she closed the festival. She did such a good job that they just straight up ended the festival as soon as we started doing anything. <laughs> oh my goodness. And uh, we can just enjoy these fireworks. And we have a voodoo doll. We're gonna have to use that voodoo doll. I wonder if using the voodoo doll also raises our mischief skill. Oh, this is pretty. There you go, Heather. Where are you? Are you are you just like <laughs> Guys? I love the Heather and every time we play with Heather. Because here I am with the rest of the Sims out at the festival. Look, everybody's here watching the fireworks, right? And I'm like, oh, Heather, you must be feeling proud. You got this place shut down because you convinced somebody that the tea is poisonous. And so they had to end the festival because of health health risks. And they needed to, like, stop the festival. That's, that's a really great prank to play, stopping the entire festival because you convinced somebody that the tea is poisonous. So here I am. And I'm watching the fireworks with all of the Sims and going, wow, it's so pretty. Oh, my goodness. Heather, you must really be enjoying this. Oh, my gosh. Where is Heather? Where is Heather? She's stealing something in the toy section of the mall. Well, everyone's back is turned. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, while everyone's back is turned and they're all watching the fireworks, she is proving to me she has what it takes, even if I don't, to be a true thief. And she is stealing something from inside the toy section. I cannot believe this. She's down here dancing. That is so funny. Oh my gosh. All right, can I, can I like, put into inventory? I can clean up toys. Uh, Heather does not own item. Oh, we can... Oh, can we swipe the big guy? Oh, we can't swipe the big guy just yet. And now Heather acquired dance skill. So while everybody is enjoying the fireworks, Heather shimmied down into the into the mall where all of the employees are upstairs watching the fireworks right now. And she is currently coming in here and I guess we can just try to swipe something. Why not, Heather? All right, look. Oh, there's even a little like tablet for the kids. And we've raised our mischief skill since we last came in here. So I think I can swipe bigger things than usual, but she's a better thief than I am because I 100% wasn't even thinking about this and she's down here like, you know what? I like, I like the color of these pillows. So let's go ahead and grab those pillows. <laughs> oh my goodness. I hope we can come in and swipe bigger things as time goes on. She swiped them without anybody paying attention. That's fine. Geez, Heather, you're just really good at this, and I'm not. And now we have a little bit more in reserve, and we have earned a little bit more. So we're trying to work on becoming fabulously wealthy right now. Uh, what's the other aspiration that has to do with mischief? Is it deviance? Chief of mischief? You know what? Let's go ahead and change her to chief of mischief for now, because it's going to be a long time before we have tons of money. So let's do that, because I think that's a better aspiration for her at the moment. But that is so funny. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, hang on. And is there? Oh, and there's a whole laundry section in this mall. Oh, I didn't really search this mall very deeply last time, but man, it's so cool. Oh my gosh, there's even little individual bathroom stalls. There's the karaoke area. Oh my goodness, there's a whole bowling alley. This is a fantastic mall. No wonder Heather likes to come here and play. I mean, look, they even have a pet area so we could bring some of the hooligans back with us. That is so cool. I just need to put one of those bushes that the cats can like climb into and, and uh, pull items from here because then we can actually let Heather go ahead and uh, let the hooligans like play in the bush and steal things by pulling the objects out of the bush or getting feathers. And we can say they like pickpocketed different items in the big city. But all right, so Heather's had a big day. Now she wants to do her laundry in the dryer. Can I literally have her do her laundry here? Is that an option? No, everything is set for like sale. Okay, so let's go ahead and send her home in just a moment. Where's our friend? I wanna say goodbye to Aki. Yeah, if I could convince her to steal some green stuff, I totally would diamond fire. Uh, right, now, once you swipe something, it takes a little while to cool down and it'll be a bit before you can swipe another thing. So let's come up here. Uh, let's ask, let's ask Aki about her day and then let's go ahead and gossip. Maybe. Are we going to, are we going to go interact with her? Nope. Aki's gone. Okay. So Aki went home. We 
got tricked by Heather ourselves because she came down here and stole something while she was at the Human Hijinks Festival. We called in sick to work and let's go home and check in on all of our hooligans because it has been quite a while. <laughs> all right. Oh, and she's sick. What? That's not called for. Is it because she's exhausted? Oh no, she has the giddy illness. Maybe the tea was spiked. Oh my gosh, somebody put in the giddy illness. That sounds like something the jokesters would do. The jokesters actually did put something in the tea. We ended the festival <laughs> for a legitimate health reason. Gosh darn it. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, and that's very cute. Oh my goodness. Bye Anya, I hope you have a great night. <laughs> also, Simpai, don't stress yourself out. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, I'm really tickled by Heather already. I really have missed her. She is she is something else and she loves her pistachios. And here we have Ginger. So let's go ahead and give Ginger. Let's give her a little pet because we're feeling super playful. Uh, hang on just a second. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. All right. Oh, Ginger, why are you stinky? You're a cat or <clears throat> a raccoon. You should be able to take care of your own needs. <laughs> Senpai. <laughs> All right. So this is Heather's house for those of you who are not familiar with it. And it looks like I have left a lot of wet laundry out, which is not an ideal way to leave a house. Oh, and look, there's a pigeon. <laughs> okay. That was awesome. All right, so it has been a long time since I've actually been at Heather's house too. So let me go ahead and have her go to sleep because I have no idea. There's a pigeon. There is a pigeon coming over and fighting our raccoon for some bird food or for some cat food. This is pretty hilarious. I don't remember leaving this this little like trailer where she tries to uh, <laughs> where she tries to hide everything. I don't remember it leaving in this state. Uh, but it's pretty awesome. So let's let Heather go to bed and then while she sleeps I will catch up with you guys in chat for just a second. Yeah, and The Sims 4 is actually on like a sale right now, I think. Uh, also, here is our little tea area. We add things to it and actually I should probably add more to it in just a little bit, but we add things to it as Heather steals new items or uh, in fact we can go ahead and put in... Oh, Heather! How did you get so many like... Wow, she got so many fireworks. I don't even know how she did that. And there is the voodoo doll. I guess those fireworks must have come to us when we were, like when we won the festival. Heather, why are you awake? You're not ready to wake up, go back to sleep. Is it because of her giggle illness? Yeah, they actually did put something in the tea. The jokesters did put something in the tea. That's so rude. All right, we'll let Heather rest. There we go. Hello, Abby. <laughs> also, you guys are having way too much fun down there in Patreon chat. I am watching you guys. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Dorkney, you're cracking me up. I am doing everything I can. <laughs> All right, so I'm letting Heather rest for just a minute. Let's speed it up a wee bit. All of the raccoons are doing pretty well. Uh, let's see. And I've actually been thinking, guys, we might split up the raccoon rascal family so that we have room for our wonderful and beloved... Tom, what are you doing over here? <gasps> it's a poodle! Hi, Brooke! There's a random poodle. Just, just He's a stinky random poodle down here in town. That's fine. That's pretty cool. But I've been thinking, guys, we might actually uh, shift up the raccoon rascal family because I think I want Irene to have some more half raccoon, half cat kits. So I'm thinking it would be really fun to like let a few of the family members go into a different household or more fun to upload some of them to the gallery where you guys can spread their sticky fingered raccoon rascally ways through all of the worlds that are out there in your Sims universes. And we can make room for Irene to possibly have a few more, more kits, some raccoon cat hybrid babies uh, who may or may not be born with fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see. Hang on one second. Oh, that's what you've been up to this whole time, Senpai. I see that. 
If you let them last a couple seconds, I'll be able to feed them to the cow plant, by the way, if you let me know. <laughs> Oh, so that's so cool, that galaxy. Yeah, my mom's family actually raised a orphaned raccoon. There was a big storm where they lived. There was a tornado, and it knocked down a ton of trees, and a baby raccoon ended up orphaned very, very young in their yard. And back then, because we're talking like a long time ago, sorry, mom, uh, you didn't really have that many wildlife, like, conservation centers or rescues or uh, those kinds of places to take the animals to. So they're like, yeah, it's baby raccoon. That's too bad. Too bad for the little guy. And my grandma was like, fine. I, my grandma was raising her youngest baby at the time and already had a bunch of bottles lying around. So they raised the baby raccoon. And my mom says it was really fun. He was extremely intelligent. He loved to hide things. Like you would find tons and tons of little places in the house where he had hidden a catch of like really fun little goodies. He loved bottle caps, milk caps, uh, like hair pulleys, shiny things, and unfortunately remotes to remote TVs and things like that. Uh, but when he turned about two, that's when a lot of the hormones kicked in and he got more wild and just went into the woods in search of, of probably a mate in his own territory and never came back. But they were just happy they were able to help him out. Uh, but yes. All right. Let's see. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And yeah, werewolf would be really cool, uh, Esser, that, or pe excuse me, Pelaclaw. Yeah, a werewolf would be really cool if they came back in. All right, well, it appears we're feeding a whole bunch of wild pigeons. I forgot about that. Pockets has a lot to say about this, so he has swept in to eat some of the food before the pigeons do. There goes Irene. But yeah, I might go ahead, and I think that we'll have some of the family, like Ginger, and I think we'll probably have Tom and maybe Pumpkin, go ahead and move out. Uh, they're older now, and they're ready to jump onto the gallery where any of you may adopt them. And I think I kind of want to get Heather, an Afghan hound, <laughs> and I want her to be able to have the raccoons have more babies at some point. So that's kind of my goal. And she's off to scold a raccoon. Why? Are they making more raccoons behind our back? Is that what's going on, Heather? <laughs> oh my goodness you guys are just cracking me up <laughs> all right so uh and we've got some of the raccoons getting sprayed by skunks so i think that's a good idea let me go ahead and empty the litter box to make sure that it's clean the litter box is just supposed to be uh the litter box is oh well i can't reach it it's supposed to clean itself but let me move it a little closer so we can empty it we're trying to pretend it's oh and actually i do have an all natural litter box now guys so let me show you a really cool mod that i have if you are like heather and you're trying to discreetly raise a bunch of uh thief raccoons in the depths of your home and go back to sleep heather i oh the reason she doesn't sleep so well is because all of the raccoons are always waking her up so shrinking how many raccoons she has to be responsible for or maybe it's all these pigeons maybe heather's house is just like the eternal sound of raccoon yells and pigeons and <laughs> this is kind of hilarious actually i forgot about all of these guys <laughs> And down here, oh look, Ginger's playing with the water drops from the the clothes. That's so cool. Oh, hello, pigeon. I have so many pigeons. I totally forgot about that. Uh, let's see. And then, let's see. Heather is back to sleep. But yeah, you can see Ginger's like scolding after her and trying to get her attention. But what do I want to do with Heather? I think I want to have her go be mischievous to a few more Sims. And I think I want to possibly get her, I think I want to possibly get her promoted. She's taking a sick day all day today and she needs to be mischievous. So let's see if we can get her promoted tomorrow and then that'll be a good spot to go. But I do think we're also going to split up the family a little bit, which sounds dramatic. But I think a few of the raccoons are ready to actually go forth and venture into your guys' worlds and I'll upload them right now. And then we'll see if Irene is, uh, thinking that she and she and our boss boss the raccoon might be ready to have some more babies so let me go ahead and take care of that really quickly uh, let's see so we're gonna manage household and we are going to say that the lovely pumpkin uh, who needs to go to like a new household there we go the lovely pumpkin and the lovely ginger and the lovely Tom 
Yeah, we'll send Tom as well. So we're keeping our best thief pockets. We're keeping boss. But I'm going to say that uh, Pumpkin, Ginger, and Tom are going to make their own new household. So, all right. I got I to gotta, I gotta pick a townie because it won't let me pick just a sim, like just a raccoon household. But we'll make a new household for them and I will upload them to the gallery and we're, we'll, we'll say that they're going on like research expeditions to go steal more things in different areas or perhaps establishing, you know, little crime territories of their own. Uh, and why won't these sims load? This is so interesting. I'll just pick a random one. Uh, this one. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you look like, but you're about to get a whole bunch of raccoons living with you, my friend. Tom and Ginger's very sweet actually, so I'm actually gonna move her in with our cat lady. Uh, all right, so <laughs> Na Naoki, I don't think you know what's about to happen to you, but you, my friend, where on earth is this random sim? Naoki, okay, I'll have to see if I can find where they just went. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to like upload them for you. But, let's see, sort by, if it's last edited, then it should be up here. Or maybe A to Z. So give me just a second. You guys are really cracking me up. Uh, let's see. Hang on, really quickly. Where did my raccoons go? <laughs> did I just send them into the void? <laughs> Oh no, okay, that didn't quite work how I thought it would. I thought I was going to just like conveniently send my raccoons into- Oh, there you are! I was so worried! Oh my gosh! Okay, it was under my household. Uh, okay, you're just gonna be known as like, um, uh, Jackson, so that I can remember you a little easier. And, uh, these mysterious hooligans showed up one night. What could they want? Perhaps bird seed? There we go. Sorry. I just really panicked. I was like, look, I just wanted space for new babies. I didn't want to like throw my raccoons into the void. Uh, so there we go. Now they have a nice... Why didn't it save that edit? Who cares? All right, let's come in. Let's edit this household. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are cracking me up and for uh, I'm gonna rename him Jackson so I can remember him a little bit easier uh, Norman Jackson sounds like the kind of guy who would have pumpkin and Tom show up so they can case his joint so we're gonna go ahead and save them and we're gonna come in and go these mysterious hooligans showed up one night what could they want could it be Birdseed? Dun dun dun! All right, and I'm going to save them. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to upload them. Give me just a second so that we can have them straight on up. There we go. Do, 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 do. There, and now it's shared to the cloud. So now you guys saw it live. You can go ahead and download the two hooligans that we have got. Oh my goodness. Oh, Oshay, I hope you're okay. There we go. We've got the two hooligans taken care of, and I just want to see if Irene... Uh, oh, and I think need to move uh, Ginger, who's a really sweet hooligan, who wants to take more after her house cat roots. She doesn't really want to become a thief. She wants to be a good house cat. Uh, but let me see if I can move her as well. Sorry, I forgot about that. I'm getting a little hungry. Let me do these. He does kind of look like Santa Claus, doesn't he, Maya? So you guys can go ahead and you can have, um, hang on one second. And there we go. So you guys can go ahead and have those hooligans if you so wish, my friends. All right, let me move a couple of households. I'm going to move. So Ginger is super duper sweet and I really love her. So I'm going to move her into the Coutts household with, if you guys remember, Jenny, who really loves cats. So I'm going to say that she's going to show up over at Jenny's place because she wants to go and meet with Lilac and Magnus, who she has heard several rumors about, and hopefully learn how to be a cat. Cat. In fact, I think there's is there isn't there like a whole alley cat song dedicated to like how to be a cat? <laughs> So she wants to learn how to be a house cat and that has left just her mother Irene 
her father pockets and her brother pocket or her father boss and her brother pockets to take care of the household. So let's see if Irene is possibly possibly willing to go ahead. There we go. And have more babies. And then I want to see if I can just kind of get Heather promoted. I've missed Heather. She's really fun to play with. And then the other thing I was going to show you guys real fast is that I found a really fantastic mod where if you are trying to go for the naturalistic look for your Sims household and you don't want to have like litter boxes out for your wild animals, there is a dun 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 dun. Hang on, I gotta find it. Dun 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 dun. dun. It's almost here. Hang on, I gotta find it. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. Where is it? Hang on, I'm gonna find it. I promise it's in here somewhere. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's go to the whole thing. Um, There it is. All right, I found it. <laughs> it's nature's kitty litter. And forgive me, I need to figure out where I downloaded it from. But it is a natural litter box. So if you're like me and you play with like a lot of lemurs, squirrels, all those things that Caltron actually provided to us so that we could have really exotic animals in our Sims 4 game, then the natural litter box is something you can put in your yard and the animals will use it and it will get rid of the litter that they leave behind really, really quickly. So that way you can have creatures who are based off of cats who don't have to use a litter box, which I think is really nice for that sense of immersion to be able to enjoy your play. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and now I'm going to have Heather. How's she doing? Doing pretty good. She's kind of hungry. Oh my gosh, her kitchen is such a mess. Heather, do you want to like upgrade this? No wonder you're always getting sick in here. What? All right, look. She stole a lot of good stuff. In fact, let's go ahead. Heather's not really a woman who wants to bring a ton of attention to herself. You know what I mean? We're here. This is her hideout. This is supposed to be the place that people just glance away from and they don't notice that she's planning criminal activity in this little trailer. So she would not keep these uh, fireworks, I think. We're going to go ahead and sell them because they would give her away if she set off a whole bunch of fireworks and she prefers having that cold, hard cash on hand. And then also let's review what her hooligans have sent her because or brought back home from their pickpocketing for her. <gasps> a fossilized egg, that is so cool. Let's put it out in the yard. All right, nice work hooligans. So they found a fossilized egg and they also found a give a dog a bone toy. So I'm gonna clean that up and then I also need to clean up this really old pistachio gelato. Um, and because Heather brought home some money, let's see if we can get her a better fridge. Because I think she's tired of getting ridiculously sick every time she eats. So can't really steal a fridge, I don't think. But let's see, what could we afford? She's really spoiled and she really likes expensive things. So I think she would want something... The most, literally the most expensive thing she could buy. To be completely honest, I think Heather would just literally, the most expensive thing she could buy is what she would get because the woman is a little bit spoiled because she likes nice things. And maybe this is why she really isn't that good at uh, managing her finances as a criminal because when the opportunity knocks, she spins, maxes out those credit cards, everything in the bank is gone because if she needs more, she'll just steal it. You know what I mean? So, and thank you, Talosi. Thank you so much um i need to throw this away but i need a trash can how that you had literally just sold all of your stuff so you could get this trash can and now i can't uh, there's no trash can to get rid of this gelato okay fine now you have to keep it in your inventory that's your own fault let's have her come over and eat maybe have a quick meal ham and cheese sandwich should do it now that she's got this fancy new fancy new fridge everything should be fine and then <laughs> irene is anxious about the new litter box <laughs> But boss is right over there marking his territory like like a boss is probably want to do. So uh, he's being a good boss raccoon. But we'll see if Irene uh, wants to possibly mate with him. I can't remember. Am I supposed to suggest that? Give me just a second, guys. I think I'm supposed to suggest that once we have enough. I think we have to be good friends with Irene. And then we might be like, Irene, you're such a pretty kitty. You should have some more kittens. So we'll see how that goes. All right, let me come over. Heather, what are you up to? I think you're just surrounded by everybody. Ooh, search your pockets. 
Search your pockets for extra cash. You need a bigger house. Alright, come on. Come on. Search your own pockets. The bed's too big? Don't give me that nonsense. Fine, throw your clothes out in the front yard. <laughs> throw all these messy clothes out in the front yard and go search your pockets. Alright, whoops. Don't put them in your inventory. Uh, search pockets, search pockets, search pockets. And her clothes are still soaking wet. Oh, those are so cute! Oh my gosh, Dorkney, I love those foster kittens you have! That is so cute! Alright, and I don't know quite how long the stream- What? Heather, are you literally stuck? Oh no, Heather is literally stuck! <laughs> this gigantic box of, of things is in her way. All these globetrotting end tables are way too big for her. Heather, we'll solve this problem. There we go. Moving the bed to the side of the room. We need more more room for all of your nefarious activity. Get the pigeons out of your laundry, Heather. Oh my- No, Heather, you left more laundry! <laughs> oh my gosh, there's too much laundry. How does a broke woman have this much laundry? This is so ridiculous. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, at least we got a little bit of money. Can I even do this laundry? I mean, we can wash it in the wash tub, but where am I going to put it? Unload and set laundry down. It's still... Heather, you need to go steal yourself enough to be able to get, like, a nice little... A nice little laundry hamper, because this is ridiculous. All right, let's try coming over. Lecture... What? You've been knocking out trash, Irene. Irene, don't knock out trash. This place is already a wreck. We don't need the hooligans making it worse. All right, I'm going to have her come over. Hey, Irene, where are you going? Irene. Oh, she's really anxious about that litter box. So hopefully she'll use it soon. She doesn't like the new litter box. And then Heather just wants to sleep more. Why is she always chronically tired? Is it the cats trying to wake her up? Let's see. Or excuse me, <clears throat> the raccoons and hooligans. Hopefully that'll really help. All right, hang on. <laughs> and a museum leopard of amber a museum would be amazing especially with jungle adventures i 1000 percent support the idea of stealing from a museum the tricky thing is that we really need to get heather's mischief skill way up because the higher your mischief skill the easier it is to steal things and the bigger the things you can steal so let's let her eat her brand new super fancy fridge. I think that she's like living the high life like she thinks she should now. She's having a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and it's possibly the first thing not to make her ridiculously sick that she has eaten in her house. So hopefully this will be really good. And yeah, keep an eye out, Snuggle Kitten, by the way, on Meadow updates. Just saying anything, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you guys are having a good time. And there is a pension convention going on, Wolfstar. Uh, there's also all these other birds. Uh, last time we streamed, anytime somebody super chatted or did something like that, I got excited and threw more bird feeders into the yard. And it got to the point where we had so many bird feeders, I had to change what we did. Uh, but the end result is that we have a lot of birds in the yard. So if the hooligans want to, like, kind of corner a pigeon and demand that they pony up, like, the good news about who to steal from, they totally can. Also, you guys are going to crack me up down there. I see you, alpacas. I see what you're up to. <laughs> All right. So let me see. I think I'm going to go ahead and end by letting Heather finish her peanut butter and jelly sandwich. She has now gotten enough money that we have upgraded her fridge. Uh, let's message her friend. I really want her to have a friend. And I think that she likes Aki. She's clumsy and the poor woman's a romantic. Bless her heart. Uh, why are we uncomfortable? Oh, is this a grungy lot? So no matter what kind of place we have, it's going to be grungy? Ah, no! Oh my gosh. So with a grungy lot, we have a chance to become nauseous when eating, drinking, or using the bathroom. <gasps> That's terrible! Heather, you're going to have to eat out most nights, I think, my dear. But let's actually have Heather maybe go to the big city oh you want to heather don't bother you can't wash your clothes in the wash tub yet because your other clothes are still soaking wet let's send her to the big city well i i want to build up her relationship with irene 
but I think Irene's a little upset today. And now Heather's upset. Everybody's upset. There's so many birds. But I want to send her to the big city and we're going to just kind of have her wander around, maybe at the mall again, make some friends. Or I lied, we're not gonna make friends. We're going to go be mischievous to them. Um, and then we'll kind of in there because it's actually a lot later than I thought it was going to be And I have to make dinner in less than 30 minutes now <laughs> because chips is gonna be home soon <laughs> But let's go to the meadows. Let's go to the meadows. We'll go by ourselves uh, And maybe we can convince Aki to come with us But we're actually gonna go and kind of case the place Maybe find some pockets to pick pull some pranks kind of start some false rumors and lay the groundwork for future hooligan happenings so, and you guys are absolutely killing me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alpaca, alpaca, alpaca. All right, so we're at the meadows. Why is it so noisy? It's just the meadows. Uh, there's not terribly much to do. Uh, it looks like, oh, there might be weddings held here. Imagine all the fancy jewelry people would be wearing that we could steal. That would be fantastic. Uh, and let's just leave Heather be for a minute. We'll just kind of see what she does, where she goes. She's casing out like, oh, can we steal something here? Heather! 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 Oh, we can steal things here! Oh my gosh! Okay, let's find what we can steal. Heather! Oh, Heather! Heather! Do you want a new chair? Look at that, guys. This is like the biggest stuff I've ever had. Oh, look at this! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Okay. So this will be where we'll end it for now and then we'll come back to do more. But I just think we discovered right now, Heather's eyes are lighting up with stars and gemstones and hearts because she realized what she probably wants to start specializing in are wedding venues and attending the wedding, blending in unseen to the wedding party and stealing things from those excessively expensive wedding parties. So I think Heather's specialty especially with the pearls in her hair, is going to end up being stealing things from weddings. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. And she can kind of be like, well, I never found anyone, so <laughs> they, they got each other forever after. I can keep their pearls. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to steal this beautiful golden bird. In just a second here, we're also going to go ahead and use the facilities here like it's nobody's business. And uh, then we're, we're going we're gonna to call it there. And then next time, I'm going to download tons of wedding venues. And we can even throw little like club parties there full of maybe your guys sims having a wedding. And Heather can kind of just sneak herself in there and steal things. So I'm kind of absolutely in love with this. <laughs> All right, and she has successfully swiped the object without attracting any attention. Who knows how much it will be worth, but that means that she has raised her mischief skill. I believe it's all the way up to level six now, and I think that means that we're getting higher and higher up on the kinds of things that we can steal. And that also means that Heather has found her new passion in life, stealing from weddings. It's bound to be fabulous. But all right, guys, that's actually going to call it here for now because it has gotten so much later than I anticipated. And I need to go rush through making dinner in like 25 minutes before Chips gets home. So very quick brief into the stream. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you guys really enjoyed seeing some of the amazing things our fantastic alpaca patrons who I love with all my heart sent us. And thank you so much for the appearance of both Tata and this gorgeous Afghan, who has actually made me want to one day get an Afghan, at least in The Sims 4, for our Sims to enjoy. So I hope you guys are all having a wonderful, wonderful night. Thank you so much for joining me for that post-birthday bash. I have got to run. I've got to make a dinner. I've got to bring in the bird feeder so our real-life hooligans don't cause any trouble. Thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you guys next time. I gotta go make chips dinner.